The scripture that governs communion comes out of 1 Corinthians chapter 11, uh, verses 23 through 26. Um, and so we will go ahead and uh, proceed with, with communion. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord on the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do as often as you drank it in remembrance of me. For as much as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Amen. 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 So, I'm going to hop right in um, into the, the message for today. And um, based on what I know now, I believe this message is very timely. So, if you have the Word of God before you, if not, that's okay. We're going to read the scripture. Uh, the scripture is going to come from the book of John, chapter 14, verses 16 and 17, and the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 6, and verse 16. And I'll be reading from the King James Version. The book of John, chapter 14, verse 16 and 17 says, And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not neither knoweth him but ye know him for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you Second Corinthians chapter 6 verse 16 and what agreement hath the temple of God with idols for ye are the temple of the living God as God hath said I will dwell in them and walk in them and I will be their God and they shall be my people amen and amen uh, I'd like to I'd like to use a title for today's a message. Uh, the title is going to be Communion with the Living God. Communion with the Living God. And feel free, um, uh, again, uh, you can send messages in, in the chat or, or scream out or, or whatever uh, as we, as we uh, go through this message. Agreement with the Word of God has power. It has power. We're going to talk about that a little bit today. So, many of us have have made you know New Year's resolutions, right? The resolutions they they can address a variety of things. But um, there was a man in in 2015, someone in 2015, uh, he had a, a question of the reality of God, right? Someone asked the question: Is God real? Is God alive? And I have to acknowledge God's uh, providence because even in a moment like today, there may be questions about is God real? Is he alive? How can he allow certain things to happen in the earth? Well, the answer to that question depends on the perspective you have on life. More specifically, the position you have in life that will dictate your perspective on 
the reality that will answer this question. We all should be familiar with those that call themselves atheists and understand that they do not believe in the existence of an all-powerful, all-knowing, and all-loving God. If you live in that world, a world where God doesn't exist, then he won't exist in your reality. You'll see things that are the predestined provisions of God as just luck. One may see it as just a coincidence or even worse, self-will, um, the absent, which is the absent of the will of God. Now, there are some that they say that they believe in God and, and will even quote scripture, but that would be like a murderer telling you that it's wrong to kill someone. Uh, their credibility on the matter may appeal, appear as a stumbling block because of hypocrisy, right? Um, while what they're actually saying is a fact, it is wrong um, to, to, to murder. In most cases, there's always a twist to the story. Uh, there's always a, a distortion of the truth. You, you got to wonder if a person is telling me this, but they practice it, um, then what's driving them to, to practice something that they know that they should not? And therein lies the, the twist. After all, Satan knows more about God than some of us do. But that's a message for another day. You see, I'm persuaded that there's no way for anyone to escape God's presence, God's power, nor his will. He sees both the good and the bad. He puts presidents in power and he endows politicians. Whether you believe it or not, he is always, even in a time like this, he is always in control. If God is dead, then it doesn't matter what we believe. Those who feel that way, the atheists, they shouldn't care at all if we believe that God is very much alive or not. However, if he, God, is indeed alive, if Christ is sitting on the right hand of the Father, then I would rather be a believer because this disposition places me on a definite side of the line in the sand. I want to be on God's side. Say this in your mind or you can say it out loud. I choose to believe in the report of the Lord. Amen and amen. So I have three points to present to you. Uh, that's your prove evident um, that with the living God the living that God. that that he dwells in us allowing us to show the world that God is indeed alive if you look at I have two boys and if you look at them uh, you know you, you and, and you know anything about me then of course uh, you would conclude that their father either, was or is alive just by looking at my sons right my boys are not simply an extract of dna from me uh, they have features they have character um and, and and presence that identify them as being part of me thus proving my existence even in the midst of their own individuality well it's the same way with god uh and these three things can that, that we're going to talk about, uh, they can hold to be self-evident of one's uh, of one's existence, and God has laid out a blueprint, if you will, for us to follow. And in this this blueprint, we do not allow, uh, or we do not only prove to ourselves, but we prove to the world that God is indeed and in fact alive. And it's all about communion. Yes, communion with the, the living God. So what should we do in order to commune with the living God? Number one, we have to stay in alliance with God. One of the things that we have to do to, to, to show, uh, to, to, to commune with the living God, stay in alliance with him. 
That means we have to be different from the world. You can't align yourself with non-family members being unequally yoked. Now, when I say non-family members, I'm just not just talking about DNA. I'm talking about being in a family that is a part of the kingdom of God. That non-family member, those who do not follow the ways of the Most High. Luke uh, chapter 7, uh, verses 38 and 44 says, And I stood at his feet behind him, weeping, and began to wash his feet with tears and did wipe them with the hairs of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with oil. Now, just hearing that, you should know that this is about the story of the lady who saw Jesus and she began to weep and wash his, his feet uh, with her tears and, and dry with the hair. Um, and then 44 says, And he turned to the woman and said unto Simon, who had the question, right? He says, Seest thou this woman? I enter into thine house, Simon. Thou gavest me no water for my feet, but she have washed my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair, with the hair of her head. You see, Jesus was in alliance with that woman at that moment. That was that that was was present. The woman that was present at Simon's house uh, when his feet was washed with her tears. He showed his alliance with this woman. He did in fact, associate himself with her. Now, there's many questions that can come about um, with this particular uh, story. You know, why is the woman, if Simon has an issue with her, uh, why is she at his house? That's irrelevant. The, the, that's, that is a, a smoke stream. The fact of the matter is she did an act that showed her alliance with Jesus and Jesus showed his alliance with her. And that's what we're talking about when we talk about family members. Okay. Well, let's look at Paul. Let's look at another example, Paul. In this uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 22, this is coming out of the Amplified Version. To the weak, wanting in discernment. I have become weak, I have become wanting in discernment, that I may win the weak and over scrupulous. I have, in short, become all things to all men, that I might, by all means... At all cost and in any and every way, save some by winning them to faith in Jesus Christ. And that's the why. That's the why you become. Why you become is, is much more important than what you become. Why? And Paul says it in 1 Corinthians 922 why he has done this he did it so that he might win some over to the faith of Jesus Christ so in that we must be be a holy cheerleader and not just a marginal mockingbird right we have to wear the colors we have to cheer doing the good and cheer doing the bad yeah even when things don't feel so good we have to be a cheerleader for God and for the ways of his kingdom. We don't just go through the motions, right? Not, not everyone that says that they, they love the Lord or acknowledges Christ is actually an ally. There are conditions for God's unconditional love. Don't trust, don't, don't, don't just read the words about God loving us unconditionally and miss the part that talks about for those who love the Lord. That's a condition. Yes, he loves us unconditionally for those who love the Lord. Romans uh, 8, uh, chapter 8 and verse, verses 38 and, and 39, it says, for I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us 
from the love of God, which is in Christ Amen. Jesus our Lord. Amen. 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 Yes. Yeah. We. We. I. I, I love. I, I love you with the love of God is usually what you hear people saying. But 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 do you really understand what that love is? The love of God. Do you really believe that you can love like God loves? That's 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 the term agape, right? Uh this 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 does not stipulate unconditional love. There there are huge conditions for agape love. If agape love is how God loves us, just by that simple thought, that is something that is spiritual. It would be impossible for us to show agape love. We can show love, but God is the one that shows us total agape. We can try to show agape love. We can do our very best. But but these earthen vessels have not been transcended into immortality. There's no possible way we can show anyone the love of God because God is a jealous God. He's the only one that can show that type of love. The word love is actually used 320 times in the Bible. Agape love is used 116 times. But you know the Greeks, where's where we get this word from? The Greeks, they 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 don't even use that word much in speaking uh because it can rarely be used to express the actual type of love that it is by mere words like using the word bad you know we can use the word bad and it can mean something negative we can use the word bad and it can mean some good it's the kind of love that is expressed no matter what the action is right when someone wants nothing but the best for you and even in what's happening today God is, is in fact still showing his love in some kind of way. And that's why it eludes us when we say we can show a God paid love. It, it's difficult sometimes for us to see the love of God. It's a faith walk. You have to know that God yet still loves us, even in what's going on. So first we have to align ourselves with, with, with God. We have to be in allegiance with him. Then we have to keep our temple clean. Through, through, throw, we have to throw away, you know, the idols in our lives. Second Corinthians, um, chapter six, verse, verse sixteen, in the A part of that, it literally says, "And in what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God." See, you don't want your temple to get stuffy. The Holy Spirit needs. A little elbow room. He he needs to be able to 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 roam throughout the caverns of your heart freely. We should set up an, an open space concept uh, in our temples. Uh, we should not compartmentalize. We should be able to see the front door and the back door at the same time. That's our our challenge to keep our temple clean. We should keep our minds on God in constant. Communion. That means we should be praying daily. We should be studying his word and his existence daily. And we should think about his goodness and, and meditate on his mercies daily. First Corinth, first uh, Philippians 4 and 8 says, Finally, brother, whatsoever things are true, right? Whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, Whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report. If there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. There's another scripture, Proverbs 8 and 10, that says the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are saved. We should be calling on the name of the Lord constantly and last but not least uh, if we want to commune with the living God again we have to truly be a family member you know how can we we sing that song you know we want to be where you are right and, and, and we're not a member of the family we haven't even allied ourselves with him right some of us are friends of the family 
Uh, some of us may even be associates of the family, but until you become a member of the family, the blessing of God would never benefit you. Never. Be separate from worldly things. You know, water and oil, they, they don't mix. Even when they're in the same container, they will not mix. We must be like water and not be changed or influenced by the oil of this world. We must strive to, to be and stay holy. We must continue to receive his agape love. No matter what shape, form, or fashion it comes in. Accept whatever God allows to come your way. As I close, I want you to, to just, if you're by someone, if you're in ears reach of someone, just tell a neighbor, God dwells in me. That, that's, that's the mark of, of a family member of the kingdom of God. If you're a family member, the outcome will always benefit the good of those who love the Lord. Consequently, the B-side of 2 Corinthians 6 and 16 says, God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. And I will be their God. And they shall be my people. So, uh, as I close family, um, just know that he is our God and we are his people. And that being true, there's nothing that can be withheld from us. There is nothing that we can't walk up to the, the throne of God and ask and it shall be given. So as we close, I'd like to close with, with, with a prayer. Amen. Um, and just, 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 just strengthen us in this time and, and, and know that even as we're communing with the living God, guess what? Brother Roger, <laughs> he is in fact communing with the living God right now. So I want you to, to, to bow your heads and close your eyes, if you will, as we close in prayer. Dear gracious and heavenly Father, we thank you for every blessing that you bestow upon us. You said morning by morning new mercies we see. And even in the midst of the good and the bad times, we know that you're still yet on the throne. We know that you are still yet in charge. We still have faith in you and we believe your report, heavenly Father. We know that things may come in some in any kind of shape, form, or fashion, but we know that you are our redeemer. We know that you are our avenger. We know that you're faithful and just. We know that in the end, everything has a purpose. And we ask for strength. We ask for wisdom. We ask for guidance. We ask for, most of all, your continued presence in our life. Help carry us through anything that you bring us to, Heavenly Father. Stay with us. Be with us. And even as we commune with one another, be it virtually or, or in body, we know that your spirit is with us also. We ask, Heavenly Father, that you, you watch over and, and, and bless the Wallace family in a very special way. We ask that you, you bring peace to their hearts and minds. We ask that all the answers that they're looking for, that they find them in you. We ask that anything that comes their way as they're, they're, they're making arrangements and, and finding out and, and talking with people, that, that your truth come out in every aspect of the situation. We ask that no matter what, that you allow us to be courageous enough to keep our minds, to keep our thoughts, to keep our heart and of course, our bodies, our acts, our walk in you. And in doing so, we forever lock in. We forever assure our continued and eternal fellowship and communion with you. Now unto him who is able to keep us faultless 
before the throne. To the only wise God be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, henceforth now and forevermore. Amen and amen.